But by having a financial advisor or company that's taking 2% of your money every year, you'd have less than half of that at $217,245. That 2% will have amounted to over $200,000 of your money. A financial advisor is defined as a person who's employed to provide financial services or guidance to clients. Financial advisors can provide many different services such as investment management, tax planning, and estate planning. Now this is different than just a stockbroker. A stockbroker basically takes your money and your decision to buy a certain stock and is kind of the middleman there. Financial advisors provide guidance and make informed decisions on behalf of their clients, meaning they may actually manage your money or your portfolio for you. So should you have a financial advisor? That's a great question. The answer is yes for some of you and no for a lot of you. Let me explain. My name is Nolan Govea and I'm a university professor who made this channel to make investing simplified. I literally made this channel so that if desired, you don't have to pay a financial advisor to get you to financial freedom. That doesn't mean that some of you shouldn't have a financial advisor though. So let's start with why you should consider having an advisor. So number one, you should consider a financial advisor if you literally have no idea about investments or about money or about finance or about any of this stuff. This is probably the biggest reason and it's definitely under Understandable. Number two, the reason why you might want to consider a financial advisor is so that you have somebody who can validate your choices. Maybe you are somebody who likes to do research. Maybe you watch my videos and you like a couple of the things that I have to say, and maybe you've picked a couple of the things that I go with. But you just might want to check with a financial advisor to make sure that you're on the right track. It's always good to get validation from somebody who's trained specifically in the field that you're working in. The third reason on this list is that maybe you do understand that you could do it cheaper and you do have the capacity to do the research, but you just don't want to. And you'd just rather have a professional do it for you. That's valid. It's expensive, but do you, bro. Now it's important to secure that financial future, but just as important to secure your most critical business data. That's why I partnered up with the sponsor of this video, NordLocker. You'll be able to protect your business data from cyber criminals, surveillance, and malware. Secure, backup, and access your files via a private file vault on the web or our desktop and mobile apps. It's also ISO and HIPAA compliant, which is a huge deal. And being an entrepreneur myself, I like this even more because this is not designed only for large corporations, but for businesses of all kinds. Online security is more important than ever, and this is one of the best companies out there doing it. See NordLocker Business in Action now with a three-month trial with the link down in my description. All right, so why you should not have a financial advisor? Number one is just that it's not as complicated as financial professionals make it out to be. Most of these people will pick 20 to 30 different stocks or even mutual funds or ETFs so that it looks like the portfolio is very diversified and also so that it freaks you out. Seeing so many positions, you're going to lack the knowledge on each one, so you're going to be afraid to do this and try it on your own. Think about it, the whole business model is so that they can keep you as a customer for life and be able to make a little bit of a fee off of you every single year forever. So they don't want you to think that you can just do this on your own because then that puts them out of money. The next reason why you may not need a financial advisor is that you just understand that understanding your finances is very, very important. Finance is not the same thing as math. I get this all the time. Oh, I'm just not good at finances because I'm not good at math. I'm just not good at that sort of thing. You're not good at figuring out how much money you make and how much money you spend. You're not good at finding two or three ETFs that are consistent and solid, and you can just park your money in there and add consistently every single month to add into that compound interest. Guys, ETFs these days are just the ultimate hack. They take all the guesswork out of picking the correct stock and you just get to end up with like an overall average of a bunch of them. One of my favorite ones and one that I'm sure you've heard of is VU, which tracks the S&P 500. By buying that one ETF, you're now an owner of over 500 different companies and they're the biggest and best ones in the United States. If those fail, we're in big trouble. So that's why I agree with Warren Buffett when he says that most people should just invest in that and keep it very, very simple. The third reason why you should not have a financial advisor is actually the biggest reason of all, and it's just that that 
fee is insane. And they even try to trick you there because they'll say something like, well, if I can make you 10%, then wouldn't you be okay paying 2%? And in your mind, you're thinking, well, 10 is way higher than two. So yeah, that sounds pretty good. The problem is that it's 2% of your profit forever. So once that portfolio has grown super, super huge and your actual financial advisor is not really doing anything at that point, they're still raking in the bulk of their money. Looking at this example, if one were to invest just $10,000 in the S&P 500 and get 10% appreciation each year by using the Easy Simple ETF that I suggest, you'd have $446,056. But by having a financial advisor or company that's taking 2% of your money every year, you'd have less than half of that at $217,245. That 2% will have amounted to over $200,000 of your money. I made it incredibly simple with the best three fund portfolio on the planet with super low fees and amazing returns, and I packed all this information into this video here. This is not only the three best funds for anyone's portfolio, but also how much of each you should invest in based on your age, because it's different based on how old you are. Check out that video now, and don't forget to check out Nordlocker with that three-month free pass.